today's topic is history of ai in previous classes we have had some introduction of artificial intelligence now let's have a, a brief introduction towards the history of artificial intelligence uh, what things have been done till now and by whom let's start uh, i will give you a general description only of history of ai because it is uh, just a, a theoretical thing you can also read i will upload this uh, lecture note on your google classroom so that you can have a read on this i am just iterating on this very quickly so that we can go on some real stuff uh, the next topic of today is uh, intelligent agents so i am just uh, iterating through the history of ai so let's start today's class history of ai so it all started with 1943 uh, when a model of the artificial neuron was designed by McClure, and then uh, 1949 uh, we have rules to modify in 1949 we have rules to modify the connection strength between two neurons after that in 1950 we have a turing test machine learning thing and genetic algorithms reinforcement learning and in 1951 minsky and inmors proposed the first neural network containing 40 neurons and after that in 1952 we have a game of checkers a program that learns and 1956 a logic theorist uh, was proposed a short it was a shortened proof of a theorem from the book prince pia mathematica in 1957 we have a gps that can think uh, like a human it was a general problem solver the first program that embodied the human way of thinking after the 1958 we have lisp what is the full form of lisp please write in the chat box what is the full form of lisp lisp uh, can anyone write the full form of lisp please write in the chat box full form of lisp come on do it first not a very tough question for you guys uh, please write in the chat box what is the full form of lisp full form of lisp come on do it first come on please write uh, no one know the full form of lisp i did not get the answer till now okay i am telling you the full form of lisp is list processing what is the full form of lisp is list processing okay can anyone tell me this lisp is an acronym or an abbreviation what sort of thing it is lisp i have told you the full form of lisp is list processing can anyone tell me it is an abbreviation or an acronym or something else please write in the chat box what it is lisp uh, this is the class of artificial intelligence so let's check your intelligence it is an acronym utkarsh is also saying that it is an acronym okay uh, isn't is it not a blend is it not a blend is it not a blend can it be a, an example of a blend uh did you remember all these thing the features of acronym abbreviation and blend and other things uh did you remember or you have forgot your professional communication class okay leave it it will be your homework just uh, open your old notebooks avishal is saying that it is an mixture okay and just revise it will be beneficial for you that you know the features and uh, understanding of these things because it when you have data and you are able to relate your new things with the past activities with the help of some rules then you can think that you can learn from your experience so uh, please keep revising whatever you have learned till now and you are in the final year so you must be aware of each and everything you have learned till now okay so uh, i am giving you as an homework to find out what it is now vishal is saying no sir blend means uh, mixture okay i understand it is a mixture just uh, find out what are other features of 
acronym abbreviation and the blend i am just asking uh, it, it uh, if this is an example qualify for the example of a blend okay so it is up to you to find the difference so lisp is lisp processing it was proposed in 1958 then in 1960 and 1962 uh, we have an adalin adalin full form is uh, firstly it was proposed as adaptive li linear neuron and then uh, adaptive linear element it is an early single layer artificial neural network and the name of the physical device that implemented this network adalin it was proposed in 1960 and then 1962 we have perceptron what is the perceptron it uh, you can think of just like in human beings we can perceive through our uh, five senses we uh, humans have five senses or six senses you do you, humans have five senses or six senses through which we can perceive our, our environment how many senses human have how many sensors how many sensor do we have please write five uh, can anyone name these five sense senses of human beings uh, six sense was in movie right okay five senses like what your skin your tongue uh, touch is not a sense touch is not a sense a skin through a skin you can touch and feel okay uh okay smell hair eye ear nose right absolutely these are the five senses of human beings through which we can uh, perceive our environment so what about uh, machines machines have perceptrons through which they can feel their environment and understand their environment so this is the proof of perceptron convergence a perceptron is a neural network unit an artificial neuron that does certain computation to detect features or business intelligence in the input data this was proposed in the 1962 itself and then uh, we have in 1965 we have an eliza chatbot this eliza chatbot uh, was trying to mimic the uh, a, a doctor of uh, psychology uh, it was a design uh, to help patients in their some fixed uh, domain information related to psychology it was an early natural language processing computer program and then 1965 we resolution rules comes into the picture then in 1966 semantic networks come what is a semantic network a semantic network is a graphic notation for representing knowledge in pattern of interconnected nodes this semantic network becomes very popular because it present the knowledge in the form of graphics in the form of gra graph and diagrams so this semantic network becomes very popular once it comes into the uh, 1966 and then 1969 we have perceptron limitation then uh, 1970 uh, to 1979 we have some expert system and this is called dendral it is used in the domain of chemistry to find, with some 450 rules to find the structure of an organic compound and then we have a mycin it contains 550 rules to identify the uh, it was an also uh, used to uh, one minute mycin has 550 rules it was different from general because no theoretical model as a foundation introduced the certainty factors and then we have in 1970 1979 advances in natural language processing and then prolog what is the full form of prolog can anyone tell me uh, logic programming language popular in europe what is the full form of prolog come on do it first uh we have to just iterate this history thing then we will go to the intelligent agent topic what is the full form of prolog come on please write in the chat box prolog full form of prolog what is the full form of prolog full form of prolog come on do it first anyone please write in the chat box come on what is the full form of prolog bridge are you there please write in the chat box come on i am waiting for your answer prolog uh, don't know sir okay uh, amit has written something amit has written programming logic 
uh, it is a it can be say as programming in logic okay programming in logic tushar has said no full form it can be abbreviated as programming in logic prolog so in 1975 we have frame theory what are the frames frames are an artificial intelligence data structures used to divide knowledge into sub structures by representing stereotyped situations means uh, you have some perception about something then you can have a stereotype situation and you can have some uh, design uh, architecture that is called a frame on an artificial intelligence data so this is the data structure of uh, to display the knowledge into sub structures of representing stereotype situations and then uh, we have an ai industry from 1980 to 2010 in 1980 ai becomes an industry itself then 1980 we have some back propagation algorithm in 1982 we have digital equipment corporation expert system and then comes into the picture intelligent agents which is our next topic of today's class intelligent agents agent is what agent are perceptions perceptions of the environment through sensors and acting on it through actions agents you can think of as someone uh, a human being or a machine or a process which acts on behalf of humans uh, as you can see that uh, we have some uh, detective agents that works for you that gather data that gather information for you uh, which uh, uh, in principle you have to gather but you hire some agents to work on behalf of you we have some agents like uh, in chemistry also that can have some catalyst agents that uh, can um, increase the uh, uh, like chemical reaction speed and there are not everything that is agent is uh, you can think of an every, anything that can help humans in their work so agent is what perception of the environment through sensors and acting on it through actions here you can see that uh, how you are percepting the environment through sensors and when you can relate agents with a human being suppose it is an human agent then what are the sensors it your five senses and then how this uh, machine agent act it acts through actions or it, it can hand acute actuators and in uh, human beings we have effectors like human organs and then robotics and machine learning comes into the picture after that 2010 uh, to today we have deep learning neural networks in large amount of data a very high advancement in computer vision and natural language processing so this is a brief uh, introduction of your history things we have to just iterate these things that we must aware that from where it has all started and what are the basic building blocks of the artificial intelligence uh, you have to just read it once only and uh, don't need to mug anything just uh, have a normal read of this lecture note i will upload this lecture note in your google classroom so let's start our today's actual topic intelligent agent uh, before this we have an example of deep learning uh, we have a deep learning system estimate the calories based on a dish photo uh, as you can see through picture uh, your deep learning algorithm can identify number of calories in a, in this plate that you can see you have french fries you have some um, burger thing onion tomato uh, each and everything i think it is your breakfast and some of you students have not taken your breakfast you can have this as your breakfast for all right so uh, an example of deep learning is uh, you can have a picture of your food and then this deep learning algorithm can calculate the number of calories that particular picture contains based upon the analysis of the food okay